It's the holiday season. And one of my favorite holiday side dishes was always stuffing or dressing, depending on where you live. And today, we're gonna make a keto-friendly version. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews and we do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we have a new recipe, you'll be alerted to it. So prior to keto, one of my favorite things to eat at Thanksgiving time, at Christmas time, was my sausage stuffing. It is delicious. It really became the main part of my meal. Like I would have a little piece of turkey and a giant bowl of stuffing. But once you got on keto, you kind of had to say goodbye to that. Right. So today, we're going to show you how to take my sausage stuffing and make it keto style. And you can use pretty much any keto friendly bread you want. Now this recipe, uh, it's a very simple recipe, but it's a little time consuming and there's not much that two people can do. So I'm going to show you how to make it and then Rachel's going to come back for the taste test. Now let's go over all the ingredients that we're gonna need. First thing we're gonna need is obviously some type of keto-friendly bread. Now for today's video, we're gonna actually use the Fox Hill Kitchen bread that I have now cut up and I dried it in the oven, but they also sell croutons so that you can completely skip that step. The croutons work really well. You can use a lot of the store-bought keto-friendly breads. We choose not to use them because pretty much all of them have inflammatory ingredients that we wanna stay away from, like sunflower oil or canola oil. Uh, you can buy some of the pre-packaged breads, like I believe High Key sells one, where you just take it, mix in a few ingredients, and then bake it in your oven. You can use Nisha's cornbread. Uh, now, I have tried the Maria Emmerich egg white bread, and it sort of worked. The reason I said it sort of worked is I found that it doesn't really soak up the liquid as I'm baking it, and so I really don't like to use a whole lot of it. I didn't get the texture that I was looking for, but if you like that, I, you can absolutely use it. My advice would be cut off the crust and don't use the crust though, because the crust gets really chewy and it just, it doesn't absorb the liquids and it just doesn't come out the same way. Uh, after that, we're gonna need some celery. I'm using three stalks of celery. You could use more or less or none at all if you don't like celery. We're gonna use a half a yellow onion we need a container of chicken bone broth or chicken broth. Uh, I'm using the bone broth because these have better ingredients. A lot of the, just like chicken bases and the chicken broths, they usually have sugar in them and a bunch of other ingredients and the bone broths generally are much cleaner, so that's what we're gonna use. We need some Redmond season salt. Now, if you don't have Redmond season salt, that's completely fine. Uh, what you can do is some salt, pepper, and then some type of poultry seasoning. Again, I like the Redmond. You're gonna think there's poultry spices in there already and poultry seasonings in there already. There's not, but it's really clean ingredients and I love the flavor that this gives. We need two sticks of butter. And then finally, it wouldn't be a sausage stuffing without pork sausage. We get this one from Aldi. Uh, very clean ingredients. We need a pound of that and then a pound of ground beef. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your bread and you're gonna cut it into small pieces, kind of like this, and then you're gonna put it on a baking sheet and put it in your oven at about 210 degrees for about 30 minutes to an hour until you achieve like a crouton consistency. So you really wanna have like that snap, like that dried out bread. You wanna make sure you get all the moisture out of it, otherwise this recipe won't work right. <clears throat> After that, we're gonna take our pot, and I like to do everything in this one big cast iron pot, less cleaning and it makes it a little bit easier. And in that pot, we're going to put a stick of butter. And then to that, we're gonna add a half an onion that's been diced up. And again, I have 
three stalks of celery. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this until they're soft and translucent. Okay, this is pretty good the way I like it. Again, the whole idea is to get the translucency of your onions and your um, celery. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just remove as much of these as possible and we're gonna put them off to the side. You could leave them in here if you want, but I find it's just as easy to just take them out, put them to the side so they don't overcook. You don't have to get it all out and you can leave all of that butter that's left over in there. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ground beef and our pork and we're gonna put that in here and we're gonna cook that up. Basically, you're just trying to brown it up. I do wanna say, if you don't have one of these, you need to get one. These things are amazing. I will leave a link for it down below. It is really good for chopping up your ground beef and your ground pork. Now while this is cooking, we're gonna take a tablespoon of the Redmond season salt and mix it in there. You could also add some other uh, seasonings if you like sage, anything like that. I love sage. Uh, Rachel is not a huge sage fan, so I generally don't put sage in here. Uh, but you can if you like sage stuffing. We'll go ahead and let this cook up. So once your meat is mostly cooked, we can start adding other ingredients. If you still see a little bit of pink in there, don't worry because this is gonna continue to cook and it will all get cooked through the process. We're gonna add our onions and our celery back in. We're gonna add in a half a stick of butter. And then we're gonna add in our bone broth or chicken stock, whatever you're using. And again, I'm using the entire container. If you feel you need more water or less water, just use more or less. It really goes by how much breadcrumbs you're gonna use or bread uh, croutons you're gonna use. And you're generally gonna look for about five to six cups. And it, the most important part again is to make sure you dry them all out. We're gonna go ahead and add all of that in. Then we're gonna stir this in to make sure that everything gets some of that liquid. Let it simmer for a little while and then we're gonna put it into the oven. Now again, if you feel like this mixture is too dry, just go ahead and add either some more chicken stock or bone broth or you can even add a little bit of water with uh, some more of the Redmond's. Seasoning kind of goes by how much seasoning you like in there. The key here is to make sure you get all of your bread nice and wet. And you're gonna see in here these white pieces. That's the Maria Emmerich protein bread. And you can see how like they just don't absorb the water and break down as much as the other bread. So we're gonna let this simmer for a little while, soak up some of that liquid that's in there, and then we're gonna transfer it into a casserole dish and put it in the oven. Okay, this is good. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off, push this off to the side. And now we're gonna get our casserole dish. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all this into our casserole dish. Push this all down like this. You may want to incorporate it a little bit more if you need to. Now there is some liquid in there, but don't worry about that. That's all going to get soaked up in the stuffing. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our butter. There's about a half a stick left. Put it up on top. Then we're going to cover this with aluminum foil and put it into a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. I have timed this perfectly. <laughs> How was the Keto Chow live stream? It's so good. I just love hanging out with everybody. Okay, stuffing is done. Now, one thing I do want to say, I like to make this the day before. Yes. If not the day before, first thing in the morning, like start your turkey, 
start the stuffing because the longer this sits it gets better the better it is like this became like pre-keto when we were using just regular like croutons and stuff this became the thing that everybody wanted like seconds of take home like the boys for five days after Thanksgiving, they're like, stuffing. where's the stuffing? Right. Pour some gravy over it. There you go. Now, you can see when you look in here, this is what I was talking about with the Maria Emmerich bread. It just doesn't break down. It doesn't. <laughs> so, whereas the other bread, the bread from Fox Hill Kitchen, breaks down, absorbs everything. That one just kind of sits there. So I really wouldn't use the Maria Emmerich bread. You could try if you want, but again, if you are going to use it, I would cut all the crust off and just use the inside. Are you ready? I'm so ready. How close is this to my original stuffing? Now, there is still some liquid in here because we kind of took it out of the oven a little early. But right. again, the longer you let it sit, It'll the more soak it soaks up. all that up. We didn't think it. Dink. Oh, yeah. The flavor is totally there. The flavor is there. The Fox Hill Kitchen bread... It really makes this. This is the third, fourth batch that we've made. Yeah. And I think this one is the best I, one. I, I think so Just too. so it happens to be the one that we do on camera. But but we were really going through a lot of, we tried a couple of different types of breads. We tried some bread mix that we got in a keto crate. Didn't work at all. It just fell apart. The Fox Hill Kitchen just holds everything, but it soaks it up. You have chunks of bread in there. It's so good. And I mean, I actually like the PSMF bread in it just because of the fact that it does hold up. It does hold up. I yeah. mean, it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is going to be our video today. Let us know down in the comment section if you make this. Let us know what are some of your other favorite Thanksgiving side dishes. Another one for me is cranberry sauce. Every year I make a keto friendly cranberry sauce. It's not quite the one I used to have because I always like just that jelly glump of sugar, but I still need to have my cranberry sauce when it comes to Thanksgiving. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over there. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time Joe makes something delicious, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time, bye. bye.